Whoa. Really good fight, man. Um, shout out to uh, Kovalev for getting the dub over Anthony Yard. Fun, light heavyweight scrap. Um, yeah, it was just a fun fight. Anthony Yard, he did a lot better than um, probably most people thought he would do. Um, first four rounds, pretty pretty even. I don't think either guy was um, controlling the fight by any means. You could say Kovalev was doing good with the jab, but... Yard was um, boxing well in spots. Most people would probably lean with Kovalev early, but I don't think Kovalev really got into the rhythm until um, really about the fifth round. Um, I would say it was probably even the first four rounds. It was kind of a mixture of both. Um, but yeah, Anthony Yard, he had a pretty good third round. He had a great seventh and eighth round. Um, you know, finally figured out that, you know, going to Kovalev's body is going to be the, you know, that's going to have the most success. Um, you know, he almost stopped Kovalev in that eighth round. Um, even Buddy McGirt said that, you know, if Kovalev doesn't show him something a little better, then he'll stop the fight. And, um, uh, Kovalev, you know, he had a good, uh, good round nine, looked real sharp. Round 10, he looked good. Round 11, obviously, uh, guys haven't seen it yet um you know he knocked yard out with the jab um you know kovalev's got it's not the first time he's knocked somebody out with the jab though he knocked out um blake caparello i think with a jab a body shot jab i think that was the fight before hopkins um but it was a fun scrap it was very competitive it was entertaining yard definitely showed heart he showed dog um his that experience was killing him you know, he had no answers for uh, Kovalev's jab. Uh, but he actually showed some skills, though. You know, what the thing, though, you know, a lot of people want to take away from what um, from what Floyd did with the Philly shell. But Floyd wouldn't get into the Philly shell until he got your timing, your rhythm. You know, once he's figured you out, then he'll go into a Philly shell. But Anthony Yard opened up the fight with the Philly shell. And, you know... Uh, he wasn't like James Tony, where he was offensive with the Philly show. You know, he was kind of just picking his shots, you know, fighting in spurts. Um, you know, you can't. It's he did better than I thought he would do boxing on the outside, but he had his best success when he was walking Kovalev down and hitting him with body shots. You know, Kovalev. Some people just can't take a body shot. Kovalev, Keith Thurman, they're just real weak to the body. Um, you know, it's, it's apparent why Canelo is hell bent in, um, for that fight because, um, you know, Canelo's an excellent, you know, one of the best body punchers in boxing. So, you know, if Canelo can get to Kovalev's body, then, you know, he could probably stop Kovalev, but you're going to have to walk through fire. You know, Anthony Yard took a lot of punishment just to get to that body. Um. Like I said before the fight, you know, he's going to have to use head movement, jab with the jabber. Um, you know, he tried throwing his left hook early on, but his best punches were body shots, you know. Um, you know, uh, Yard kind of fought in spurts. Actually, that's kind of what Canelo does. Canelo's a much more seasoned fighter. Um, but he's also a lot smaller, too, you know. Um, and he's well known for fighting in spurts. And Canelo himself don't have the greatest gas tank past round six. So Kovalev versus Canelo, that's going to be an interesting fight. I'm not sure who would be the favorite. Maybe after this performance, they might lean with Canelo as a favorite. It wouldn't shock me. Um, it's tough to say, you know. But then again, you're going to have to, you know, can you, we don't know what Canelo's chin's like above 160. You know, I'm not counting Rocky Fielding. You know, Rocky Fielding was rock, was weight drained. Um, Chavez Jr., 164.5, he was weight drained. So we don't really know what Canelo's chin is at 168 or let alone 175. So style-wise and skill set-wise, I could see why Canelo would be the favorite. But kind of like Anthony Yard, Canelo doesn't have any experience at uh, 175 and even 168, you know, brief experience up there as well. Um, but Anthony Yard showed some really good skills, you know, had he fought some, you know, gatekeepers, contenders, and challengers before he fought Kovalev, you know, maybe like a Chalimba, um, Blake Caparello, Cedric Agnew, and then he fought Kovalev, had some experience, um, 
he he could have he could have shocked the world, man, because that eighth round, seventh round, he was getting it going. In the eighth round, he looked like he was about to stop Kovalev. Um, but he, like I said, he never went past seven rounds. So, you know, and to, and you know, Anthony Yard, he's a big dude, you know, very muscular. So, I think they they said it on the telecast. Outside of Tim Bradley, most people with that kind of, you know, GI Joe type of build, typically they don't have the greatest stamina outside of Tim Bradley. So, um, you know that. So it's, you know, boxing, you really want to be more vascular than muscular. You know, musculars, mus, muscles, muscles require oxygen, you know, a lot of blood flow. So the more muscles you have, the more oxygen you're burning up, the more blood flow you're using up. So that's why you want to be, be more built vascular than muscular. You know, Anthony Yard, suspect gas tank. Why? He's real muscular. Anthony Yard, suspect gas tank. Why? He's muscular. Even Canelo Alvarez, suspect gas tank. Why? He's muscular. Kel Brook, he's known to have not the greatest gas tank. Why? He's muscular. What is, you know, common theme? Muscles, that's that's cool. You know, the, the Rocky, you know, real diesel or Apollo or not, you know, yeah, Apollo or um, Creed. That's cool for the movies, but in real life, you really don't want to have that body frame. You really want to be more built vascular um, because you're burning up less oxygen. And, you know, to me, stamina, conditioning, experience kind of hurt Yard in the end. Um, apparently, Anthony Yard didn't spar before the fight. I didn't know that going in, um, which is incredible considering how, how well he did. Um, but Anthony Yard, he, he should, you know, shouldn't have his head down. He, he had a really good performance against a champion in his hometown. He, you know, he almost did shock the world, but, you know, almost is almost, so. But uh, I, I thought the corner experience was also played a fact. You know, Buddy McGirt was giving Kovalev good instructions, told Kovalev to go to the body, created some urgency. When Kovalev almost got stopped, Kovalev had an immediate good round. Whereas uh, Atunde, I think that's how you pronounce his name, Yard's trainer, he was quiet for a couple of rounds. He didn't really say much. Now, he had a lot to say going into the fight and building up the fight, but in the ring... He didn't really give much instructions. So that corner experience, you know, also hurt him as well. Not just, you know, in the ring experience, but Yard's not a bad fighter. You know, definitely got a good ceiling. Um, he can bounce back, you know, take some time off. Uh, of the two Ant UK Anthonys, I would actually say um, Yard actually might need more of a... Well, I mean, uh, Atunde just didn't say much. I mean, I... I don't know, that, that kind of rubbed me the wrong way. He, he had a lot to say going into the fight. But when the fight was actually going on and his, you know, his guy needed him, he didn't really say too much. So, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that. So we'll see what happens with Anthony Yard's future. But he's got a bright future. He can definitely bounce back. He's young. He's only 28. I think he only had like 12 amateur fights. And he held his own with an experienced champion in his backyard. So, And definitely had flashes of skill, flashes of good moments. He definitely showed heart. He showed dog. Um, but you, you know, there's reasons why you do spar. There's reasons why you want to fight your gatekeepers, fight your challengers, fight your contenders, you know, so it can help you build up for the moment. But he handled the pressure well in terms of, you know, being in a big fight overseas. Um, you know, he's not like Anthony Joshua where he got spooked. He was real confident. He actually was dancing <laughs> in his way into the ring. So Anthony yard has got a lot to, you know, a lot to gain from the fight. Um, Kovalev actually gave Anthony Yard props during uh, Anthony Yard's interview afterwards. So, you know, he, he, he definitely got the boxing world's respect. Um, so he, he can definitely, he's definitely got a future. Kovalev, I don't see him beating the young champions in the division. Uh, Dimitri Bivol and uh, Vodstick and Better Bivol, who apparently are fighting, which is great news. I'll make a video about that. Um, but I think those young Lions would definitely... Um, well, I don't think Better Beav and Vodstick are super young, but they're real fresh. You know, they're like a fresh 32 or something. So, um, but definitely that Canelo fight, it's definitely going to happen. I'll probably say somewhere in December. In fact, it might be the last big fight of the year. So, 2019 might close with a bang. So, uh, with Kovalev versus Canelo. That'll be an interesting fight. It'll be, um, that'll be interesting. 
Um, that would be a fun one to break down, but um, definitely watch it. Uh, the Yard vs. Kovalev fight if you haven't seen it already. Um, let me know what you guys think about both fighters, uh, the performance of both fighters, the future of both fighters. But it was a good light heavyweight scrap. Drop comments, like, subscribe, stay tuned. You guys take it easy.